here's the leg for the base of our cart. Most people aren't fortunate enough to have a code saw in their garage. You go, Kev. Smoking. Most of us have a chop saw with a metal cutting blade on it. Obviously, ours is a little worn out, a little small. Always remember when you're using one of these, wear safety glasses. They throw shrapnel, debris, sparks, and little things that sting. All right, what do we got? All right, man. How about a couple of shorties at three inches? Gotcha. All right, so this is kind of laying out the base. The engine itself on its stand is going to kind of wheel in and out of here like so. And uh, what we're going to do, this is upside down. We're going to throw some casters on the back corners. And, oh, sweet, man. We're going to throw some little stubbies on the front. So, you know, obviously when it's sitting right side up, you got wheels on one side. These are going to keep it from scooting around. But all we got to do is just lift it up a little bit. It'll roll around the shop. When we set it down, be nice and firm. All right, so we're gonna flip it over in a little bit, but we're gonna start doing all the vertical pieces, a couple of the tops, so a lot of tube cutting. All right, cleaning up all the burrs on the tubing. I like to do the inside and the outside. If you look at this guy, you got all these nice snaggly burrs. Um, you know, when you come by and wipe with a rag, you know, you're gonna use something like a paint thinner and get all the oils and some of this black coating off. You don't want that rag snagging on those little burrs. Now you got rag there to burn when you go to weld. So cleaning everything up is really nice. You can come back with, you know, a Scotch-Brite pad. and you can knock that black off pretty, pretty easily. So we're gonna get all these tubes prepped and clean, and we're ready to start throwing them up on the welding table, stick them together. <sighs> Last one of these, okay, so check this out, Kev. You know, on the bottom, we're just doing butt welds, so yep. it's okay, but when you want a professional look, you want the edges closed up, a little cleaner look, you wanna do some 45s like this, and that way when we put the top and the front together, it's gonna give that closed off look. A little cleaner fit, finish, and whatnot. And then we're gonna go to the shells, which I gotta tell you, I saw something in the back. I think you're gonna love it. All right? Yeah, what do you got? It's a surprise. All I'll right. go get them for you, but they're gonna make awesome shells. Hey, welcome back. Now we've got our uprights fixtured here. I've got this side clamped down. I got my square in here, got everything in 90, I'm ready to start MIG welding. Let me walk you through a little bit if you've never seen one before. Now, MIG welder's great. In here, I've got a big spool of wire. And once I pull this trigger, wire comes out. That's great. I've got two dials here typically. One is how fast that wire comes out. The other is how much heat, how much current is going through there. So between the two, I can really dial in, you know, my weld characteristics based on thickness of the material, you know, how deep a penetration I want. So there's a lot of adjustability with just those two knobs. Now there's usually a chart on the inside there. And if you, uh, you know, maybe somewhere on the outside too. So we got a chart in here. It'll get you kind of started based on the thickness. But the best thing to do, get yourself a piece of scrap, about the same thickness as what you're gonna be welding on, start playing around. So let's start, let's start cold. Let's throw a little bead on there. All right, you can, help, you can tell just by the sound, that's no good. Look at that guy just sitting on there. So we're gonna turn the heat up a little bit more. Still not so good, but if I can hold it up for the camera there, you can kind of see how it's starting to, you know, penetrate a little bit, but it's still pretty proud. I'm going to go ahead and crank this guy up. Yeah, it's a little bit better. You can hear it. It sounds more like frying bacon. It's a little more consistent. We'll go ahead and crank this guy all the way to the last bit and we'll get started. Now, I've got this thing, like I said, 90 degrees. It's ready to go. But if I just start welding on it, Anywhere where you're putting a lot of heat, you've got, you know, molten metal. When it cools, it's going to start to shrink. Doesn't matter where you put it, you're going to shrink as it cools down. So if I throw a big weld in here, this is just going to close in on me. Well, I don't want that. I want to clamp it nice. I want to fixture it nice. Um, anything to kind of hold it in place, but it's still going to want to spring once I pull it out of the fixture. So one thing you can do, let me find sort of a neutral surface. Maybe I'll throw a tack up here. Maybe I'll throw a tack on the back. Start locking it down so everything is kind of holding good. Throw some tacks on the corners, on the insides. Leave this guy alone. Then maybe I'll come over here, set this side up. 
tack it real nice so everything's kind of held, but I haven't thrown a ton of heat at it. I can do that with all my assemblies. Get them all kind of tacked together, then I can slowly build it all together, tack it all. Now I can start running little stringer beads, but I want to space them out so no area gets really too hot at one point. So it all kind of moves a little bit, moves a little bit, moves a little bit, moves a little bit. But in the end, it's all kind of settled kind of right where I want it. So let me get some tacks on this guy and uh, keep on moving. Welcome back. Now we got the frame pretty much coming together. Everything stayed nice and square. So this is the gist of, you know, everything we're going to start hanging onto this guy. We got some wheels and little feet to kind of throw into the bottom, but I think she's ready to start adding accessories. All right. Speaking of accessories, here's what I got. Uh oh, what do you got? All right. So I saw these back there in the back, right? I figured yeah. these would make pretty cool shells. Some people may have some old headers laying around. So we just bolted through the flange, put a piece of wood right here, countersink the bolts, and here's your cylinder head bolt, right? Dude, I love that idea. Except yeah. these are for that Camaro project. Camaro, what? Yeah, the 78 Camaro, throwing some headers on it, uh, some exhaust, and... Uh, uh, we'll see. Um, I already cut, see, look. All right, well, apparently we're gonna put this Camaro project yes. on a hold. Yeah, see? <laughs> That way, this symmetrical. All right, seeing as how we can get another set of headers, yes. and I like the idea, huh? let's roll with it. Come on, you can't, everybody's gotta have headers on the side of their engine. Yeah, just envelope. not the ones we were gonna use on the project. Shh. All right, why don't you knock that finish off so we can Got get it. a good weld. We'll get that new flange you may put on there. Yeah. We'll get some crossbars and, uh, I don't know, maybe a piece of wood so it doesn't scratch a cylinder head. Coolest cylinder head shell ever. All right, so a lot of us may own a plasma cutter in our garage, kind of a cool tool to have, but this is a big step above. It's a CNC plasma table. And as you know, in our engine envelope here, we're gonna have a brace that comes across here. We're gonna hang a little box on it, put in our accessories, spark plugs, push rods, whatever you may need. Now, how does that box or shelf get built? Pretty simple with this little program. Thing seems intimidating at first, but once you get in the seat of it, it's not so bad. All right, we'll start out with a 26 inch square. That's what we have right here. So then you grab this rectangle, pull it over this way, make sure the lines overlap. Grab this square here, line her up there, and this square over here on the right, line it up there. And you want to highlight the entire thing like this. And basically, you run up here and you hit weld. What that does, it takes out all the lines, and that's your program. So what's gonna happen here is when it cuts this out, we're gonna take the brake and bend this. That's gonna actually fold over the brace right here. And then this is gonna become the back wall of our box. It folds in like this. This is our front wall of the box, so it folds up like this. And these are two ends, closing it up. And that's how easy it is to draw one, and this is the actual one we're gonna build. So when you go to build it, it's really simple. Go up here, hit play, give me an okay. And there it goes. And it's that easy. Here it is, hot off the press. Put it in a brake, do a few bends, weld it up, and this is gonna become our engine envelope box. Pretty cool. All right, welcome back to Two Guys Garage. Kev working on our engine envelope. Here's what I got. I found some metal stock in the back and some mall threads. So what I did basically, just get a couple holes, center it up, and I took it and put it at an angle, tacked the back of it, so we have rod and piston holders. Nice. So see when you get that on the uh, shelf, it's just a slight angle so you won't knock off the rods and pistons. That's right, man. Sure, we can put goes. it right on the outside of the box like this, and I'll find some fuel line in the back, cover up these threads so it won't hurt the bearings. Now we got a place yeah. for all the rods and pistons on Nice both soft sides. surface to hang the rod, whether it's the big end, the piston hanging down, or the small end. Perfect place nice. to put those pieces. Now we got a few more goodies. Yes. So this is the other side header. Right. Willie cut this down nice, so it's about the same sort of width as the, the other side. Got a flange cut out here. We've already got our mounting holes. That'll get welded on there like that. Then this whole assembly, right. we can bolt onto a crossbar anywhere we want. Lay a nice piece of wood here that's soft so it won't scratch the cylinder head surface. 
So nice place to hang all of our cylinder heads. Coolest cylinder head shelf ever. So why don't we go all start right, making this. that. You start the, uh, the box. All right, I'm gonna handle the TIG part over here. This is our bend, got the ends sort of pretty close to where we can start to tack weld those and weld them up. Now what we're gonna do is set this aside. It's gonna hang right in here somewhere, a little one by one, this will hook in. When we're ready to carry it off, carry it off, go load it up. But let's start with some basics, show you a little bit about aluminum TIG welding. So let me get this thing set up. All right, I think I got the heat just about right. Now your max amperage is gonna be set on the dial, but everything below that or up to that point is with your foot. So you're changing the current, you're changing the heat, you can dial that thing in just right. You've got your tungsten making the arc, you got your rod putting the filler in. Now with aluminum, there's a few things to consider. It's very sensitive to dirt, debris, and oil. So clean your parts really well. Get yourself a nice stainless brush, write aluminum only on it, and only use it to clean your aluminum parts with. All right, next thing is gaps. I'm gonna get Willie over here to give me a hand real quick. Now I could put a bead you know, right down in here where it's touching really well. Uh, and then hammer for him, you know, close these gaps up and keep working my way up. But I'm gonna have him go ahead and close that gap because aluminum really likes to kind of melt and fall away from each other. So if you can get a good tight gap, it's gonna really save you some effort. Okay, just got a little blob on there to hold the part together. And what I can do is go around, tack the whole thing, then run some stringers. Now, a good tip, if I started here and welded this direction, by the time I got to here, I'm gonna be so saturated with heat, it's just gonna blow away and fall apart. So once everything's cool, I may come in here and start a little weld bead here, then I can go either direction and I'd be set. So let me get this thing tacked, welded, we got another one coming, we got a tray, we got a lot of welding to do, bringing this thing together. You Look at what? this. Oh. This is <laughs> payoff time, man. We've been working on this thing all day. Yeah. Check it out. Everything you need for an engine build right here. Right, man. Up here, you can throw your intake, your fuel rails, your valve covers, big bin up here. Then we have our shelf for our cylinder heads. And back here, a bin for any kind of accessory we want from spark plugs to push rods and whatever. That's right, man. Check this out. This will lift up. We'll take it away. We recess the screw so nothing to scratch a cylinder uh -huh. head. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. All nice rubber surfaces so you can hang your pistons and rods. Nice. Good job. And we can customize this thing any way we want in the future. Add a tray for spark plugs, push rods, and you name it. Cup holder. Cup, maybe two. Yes. All right. 